a movie can be amazing, but if nobody knows about it, then it's just another film. Um, obviously, Jaws has creeped into the psyche and been freaking people out for years. And um, having met so many amazing people on Facebook um, that are Jaws fans, I felt it, you know, I, I was like going, you know what, we need our own documentary. We need something that kind of tells about who we are. And so I just got on the Jaws Fanatics uh, group page and said, hey guys, I'm thinking about making a documentary about us. Who's in? And it just exploded. Everybody, you know, as many people that, that wanted to uh, be in it said, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it. So I had to start figuring out how we were gonna do all these interviews. I got people from England, I got a guy from Spain, people from all over the world wanted to be a part of this. And I just decided that, um, you know, if they've got cameras, let them shoot their interviews and shoot it the way they want it, you know? If, as long as they're in the shot and they wanna have their, their mem memorabilia and that in there, let's go ahead and do that. And then I'll just piece it together. So yeah, that's, that's basically how it came out of it. And the response has just been phenomenal. first time I heard about Jaws, um, it was the summer of 1975. I was eight years old and I was having lunch with my father and uh, a couple of his friends and they started talking about this movie with this giant shark that was eating people and I was just hooked. Yeah, to use, uh, to be uh, cheesy, I was. I was completely hooked. I had to know about this movie. And uh, a little later on uh, that summer, when it was actually released, uh, I begged and pleaded with my mother to take me to go see it, and uh, the rest was history. Uh, I don't remember the first time I heard about Jaws. The first time I saw Jaws was on TBS, and it was Jaws 3. I didn't see the first one, and in fact, I think I saw the second one next, so it was sort of backwards. Um, I may have even saw the first one last, I don't know. Two, three, and four ran on TBS often. The first time I ever heard about Jaws, a um, young child, along with my siblings and my mother, took us to the local theater to see Jaws. Got in there, of course, mom really didn't know what we were going to see. We thought we were going to see a big fish movie. As, as uh, children, we really didn't realize what we were about to experience. Got into theater and of course right off the bat, you know, when the when the when the shark attacks and, um, you know, fear it just grips the it gripped me, it gripped the audience. It was a it was one of the most scaredest times I've ever been in my life. And and uh, when the and the, the big moment when the head rolls out of the hole in the hull of the ship. My, uh, my sister threw her drink over her head and my brother popcorn went straight up in the air. And of course we got wet, popcorn stuck to us, people behind us got the, the same thing and of course we're not the only ones but that was the uh, introduction to Jaws and it, it really affected me. Uh, from then on, in, in many ways. First time I heard about Jaws, I don't even remember uh, a period of my life where there wasn't Jaws. I was born in 1971, um, so I was three when it came out. And the book, well, the book came out when I was three, the movie came out when I was four. And I guess it was probably in a commercial. I remember my cousin going to see it. He was the same age as I was, and he had nightmares forever. He had really cool shark posters on his walls that had to be covered up by newspaper so that he couldn't see them. <laughs> so when he went to bed, my, par I, my parents wouldn't take me to see it, smartly so. So I read the book when I was five. I, my mother wouldn't let me read it, so I would sneak up in the morning and read as much as I could before they got up. And they caught me halfway through. My mother said, I don't think he should be reading that book. And my dad said, he's five years old and he's reading Jaws. So I read the book and I was obsessed with Jaws. I've seen Jaws, I must have been about eight or nine years old when my dad brought the tape home on Betamax. 
that's going showing how far back that was. Um, yeah, what an experience that was. At that age, I could not swim. Um, I had a bit of a fear of the water anyway, and then after watching Jaws, it got progressively worse, uh, resulting in me not learning to swim until I was 14 years old. Yeah, um, I can swim okay now, but there's always that slight fear whenever you're out in the water that you may see the dreaded fin coming at you on the horizon. Um, I have scuba dived as well in Australia and the whole time I was under the water I couldn't stop thinking that a great white was going to be coming at me from any direction trying to take my legs off as I kicked and spotted in the water. I don't remember the first time I heard about the movie. Um, I was way too young, so I remember, and I, don't, I really don't even remember the first time I saw it, but I do remember watching it a lot with a good friend of mine at the time. Um, he and I used to watch it, you know, in his basement all the time, and it was like that kind of, we shouldn't be watching this, it's too bloody, it's too scary, but, you know, before we had access to R-rated movies, that was the one that kind of got us through but I do remember you know wanting to see more you know what I mean like seeing that one wasn't enough and of course by that time when I was a kid Jaws 2 and 3 had already come out so it had everything that uh, you know a young boy could could ask for in a movie a lot of action a lot of adventure a lot of guts and blood and, you know I mean who wouldn't like that when I heard about Jaws for the first time I was just about five or six years old it all happened in a video shop. There I found the movie, in a shelf, where they placed the video cassette tapes. It had a great blue eye design, and the shape of the shark on this cover. I was rather impressed by that design, which made it remarkable, feisty tail among the rest of the video cassettes. But I couldn't watch the entire movie till I was about mm, eight, eight years old. And when I did it, I did it next to my friends of the neighborhood. I did it in the, the living room of my house, there in the town beach. My brother next to me, at home. We were all sitting on the sofa in front of the TV, watching at it. Um, automatically, the movie attracted to all of us. From that moment on, there was that movie, and then the rest of the movies. I was in the third grade, it was the last day of school, waiting for the bell to ring, so we'd be off for the summer, and I see this Time magazine, on my teacher's desk and it says it's a big shark coming up and just says super shark I was like what what is this and she goes oh it's a new movie about this uh, monster shark that comes to the beach and kills a lot of people and I was like oh my god I gotta see this thing so uh, I ran home asked my mom and she said yes but my mo you know we're gonna go see it tonight in Boston her and my dad and we'll make sure it's okay for you to see it sure enough the next day first thing out of my woke up in the morning what, how was it how was it can I go see it she goes yes we'll take you next week with your friends and uh, she got a lot of flack during that whole week because friends of hers heard that she's gonna take me I was nine at the time when the movie came out and uh, they thought it would be too gory because they heard a lot of stories how gory it is and all that and she goes oh please if he could sit through those Christopher Lee Dracula movies uh, he could sit through anything so sure enough I started the next weekend and it changed my life you know, I think the first time I ever actually saw Jaws in its entirety that I actually was paying attention was on the couch with Todd Braley. Um, I had never, I mean, I'm probably, I'm pretty sure I saw it as a kid, but I'm not 100% sure. It just was never a staple as it is now. <laughs> um, and Todd, you know, just couldn't believe that I had really never sat down and watched the whole movie. and that I didn't know kind of the whole story. I mean, I knew it was about a shark. That was really pretty much it. Um, so I think the first time was probably about three and a half years ago. We sat down together and we watched it. And I actually really enjoyed it. I was kind of surprised that I enjoyed it because, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shark. <laughs> but I enjoyed it more, I think, watching it with Todd because not only does he know every single line of the movie, but he also, I mean, he just, he, he acts out the entire, the entire show every single time you watch it. There has been one time and one time only that I have sat down and watched it with him that I actually got to listen without Todd in the background mimicking every single word of the movie. 
Um, and that was only because I said, you know, I've never seen this, this part of this movie without you in the background. And so he actually put a pillow over his face so that he could like sit through it and let me watch it without him in the background. First time I ever heard about Jaws was probably uh, from my dad, obviously. He's a huge Jaws fan. And um, I don't really remember all that much because I saw it when I was really young. And uh, before I saw it, I don't re really remember much from that time. So it, it obviously must have been from my dad. First one I saw was the first Jaws, and I remember having a lot of nightmares after the first time I saw it. Um, the one, m most reoccurring one was I was like in the middle of the ocean and like there was nothing around except water, and this fin just kept popping up out of nowhere, and it, I just remember that being like one of the scariest dreams I've ever had, even to this day. It still freaks me out to think about that dream, and. Um, and that's obviously what I thought about it. It was scary, and I grew up around a lot of horror movies, and but I would say that that's probably one of the first ones, uh, more intense ones that I saw at that age. I remember the very first time that I watched Jaws. It was a Sunday evening, a school night, and I was six or seven years old, and I was watching it with my parents, and I started watching it, and I was totally engrossed in the film. And I remember thinking, oh, I have to go to bed soon, they're gonna send me to bed, and I remember saying, Mom, Dad, can I stay up? But I still remember them saying, oh, should he stay up? Is, is he allowed to watch this? And my dad was going, it's Jaws, he's, he's a classic, he's got to stay up. So they uh, stayed up and we watched it. And I remember my mom sat next to me the entire time, waiting for the bit where the head pops out of the boat, ready to cover my eyes. I don't think I saw that bit until I was about 10, 12 years old, because my mom sat there constantly covering my eyes up. Anyway, after I saw it, I was totally engrossed in the film. Absolutely engrossed. It was on a few weeks later, so I recorded it on video and um, watched it over and over so much that the tape ran out. So then my parents, they bought me this video. They bought me Jaws on video. And um, I was told my granddad about it. It turned out it, I think it was my granddad's favorite movie of all time. It was my dad's favorite movie of all time. It was his brother, my uncle's favorite movie of all time. So then I always remember then, Sunday evenings, we used to go over my granddad's house and we'd all sit around the four of us quizzing each other about the movie, asking each other really obscure questions, trying to catch each other out. And I remember them being really impressed, if not slightly embarrassed, that a seven-year-old boy used to know more about Jaws than them. You know, it's almost like a Spielberg moment when he went into the office and saw all the paperwork and he saw the word Jaws. All I remember is an image of being in my uncle's house, getting ready to go to the beach, before the movie came out, when the book was out, and I saw the paperback book on his table, and that was my first impression of Jaws, not at that point knowing that it would be a movie. Living on the coast my whole life, Narragansett, Rhode Island, I could relate to it, and going, you know, visiting Cape Cod all the time. So, uh, didn't really scare me, really enjoyed it, followed the movie, loved it as a kid, understood it. No scarier than any other movies that I saw. So my first memories of Jaws was uh, when it came out on the Betamax tapes. I never, my parents weren't the going to the movie theaters type of people, so we normally waited for it to come out on TV or, or come out on some type of cassette medium, whether it be beta or, or finally when VHS came around. Um, the, thing, the thing I think that, that kept me that has stayed with me all these years is the fact that now that I'm, I'm in my 40s, I don't go into the ocean. I don't get much more than ankle deep just because of the, that image of people swimming, uh, the woman swimming across the water, the iconic um, music that went along with it is something that's really kind of kind of stayed with me. and. and even to this day, any kind of strange lake or pool or anything um, besides my own swimming pool, that the water's dark and I can't see in it, I, I don't go in it because I don't know what's inside of it. You know, There's probably not a, a shark inside the swimming pool, but it's one of those fears, something that, that's kind of stuck with me you know, for 30 something years. The first time I ever heard about Jaws was probably around 1978. Uh, I was about three years old. Uh, my mom's an avid reader and she had this little bookshelf in the hallway of our house and I was going through there looking at pictures and whatnot and 
stumbled across this book with this picture this shark on it or monster I thought you know I was just a kid at the time but I don't know that image just sort of drew me in and you know I couldn't read it obviously because I was still pretty young but I mean I was just so captivated by that picture on the cover I just started carrying around the little bantam paperback everywhere I went <laughs> so uh, I guess that's where the uh, the fascination and obsession with this film began for me the first time I remember hearing about Jaws was um, just from the newspaper ads. We, we lived in California at the time and we, we used to get the, um, the Los Angeles Times and in their calendar section, they always had like full page ads of their movies and Jaws showed up in there when, you know, cause that was, I used to love to look at that even though we never really could afford to go to the movies very often. I always looked at those pages because those were the, um, that's where my movie posters came from, you know, and literally I would cut them out and I'd hang those things on my wall. So um, I saw it and um, it looked like something that was really cool. Then what happened was I was feeding a, a friend's dog in the neighborhood and they were gone for like two weeks. And they had the original hardback version of Jaws on their shelf at their house. So every day when I would go over to feed their dogs, I would go over there twice a day. I'd spend like 20 minutes and I'd take the book off the shelf because I didn't know if I was supposed to do that or not. And touch other people's stuff like that. But I would take the book off and I'd sit and I'd just thumb through the book and read. Now there was a lot of stuff that was in the book that didn't wind up in the movie, but it was one of those things I was just reading and I, I was like, this is like the coolest thing ever. I guess I was introduced to the film Jaws at a pretty young age, I was, I was lucky. Um, I remember being seven years of age, going to the mall with my mother, walking by Walding's and seeing this big cardboard cutout of a, of a shark and then seeing Peter Benchley's book. Uh, that picture alone fascinated me. The size of the shark, uh, the woman swimming, um, why is she naked? <laughs> I remember, I'm seven. I believe second or third grade, but I was a very good reader. So back then it was okay. You know, I told mom, can I just meet you in the middle of the mall at the fountain in an hour and I'm gonna hang here or meet me here and she said that was okay you know you could get away with that back then now not so much so but and I would I'd start reading it and uh, you know every visit to the mall I'd pick up a little later where I was and then I found out my uncle who was two year, three years older than me uh, purchased the book he was 10 and uh, when he got done with it, he gave it to me and I read it and, and was blown away. And, and then, you know, the book said soon to be a major motion picture. I'm like, how are they gonna do this, I'm thinking. And so I got to experience Jaws Mania in the 70s. I mean, the marketing for the film, the commercials, the posters, the t-shirts, the toys, the collectibles. I'm. I had all that stuff. I still got a lot of that stuff and always picking up more stuff. Even cut out newspaper ads every day, you know, coming soon. Well, that day came, but mom and dad were not going to let me see it because of the, the image of the poster and the phrase may be too intense for younger children. Well, me and my uncle went and seen it anyway. We went and took a key line bus. That's the name of our bus here in town. And went out and seen it. Was totally blown away. Blown away, scared to death. That opening scene shocked me. The first time I ever heard about Jaws, um, oh boy, I was probably like five or so. Um, I went with uh, my mom and some of my family to SeaWorld uh, in Cleveland when it was there. And um, they had a gigantic uh, like cardboard cutout of uh, the shark that you could go stand behind inside and have your picture taken. And um, the picture is lost and I can't find it anywhere. But um, that was probably the first time that I really knew what Jaws was. And I think for me, it was the shark, really, and I think to that, to this day, it's uh, that iconic, you know, image of 
the shark uh, is what really has been my obsession with that movie. Um, but that's what got me hooked. And um, I remember watching that one uh, when I was really young. Um, and then I remember uh, being able to watch, um, you know, the other ones uh, as I got older. And of course, you know, it started with watching them on TV. And um, that was back when you could record TV on a VCR. So I would sit and watch them uh, and wait for the commercials and pause it, you know, so that I could watch the movie later, like without commercials. Um, and then eventually, you know, came along DVD and then Blu-ray. And I had a Blu-ray party actually when the movie came out and I had some friends over and we watched it on uh, big screen, Blu-ray high def. It was kind of fun. Uh, saw things and heard things I had never seen before. So that's what made it really cool. I first saw Jaws when I was eight years old and that's way too young to see that movie. Uh, I saw it at the theater in 1975 when it came out, in its original release. Um, I asked my mom recently, why in the world did you take me to see Jaws when I was eight years old? And she said, well, because you asked me to, because you wanted to see it. And I thought at that moment, well, I've always known my mom was great, but how cool was that to have a mom that just, hey, can, you ask, can I go see Jaws? Sure, let's bring the family. And then forever more, vacations were a nightmare because none of us wanted to go in the water but um, I vividly remember something and I don't even know if, even though it's a vivid memory I don't know if it's true but I remember seeing a giant Jaws logo you know the shark head with the mouth open um, over the front entrance to the theater that we were going in to see so you'd have to walk through the shark's mouth to get into the theater now I don't don't know if that's true. That's just a memory I have. Maybe somebody can verify if that something like that actually existed back then. But um, that's how I remember it. The first time I ever heard about Jaws, newspaper ad. My dad took us to go see the movie. Uh, never saw the shark the first time around because we had this enormous lady in front of us with huge hair. And every time the shark came up, um, she would scream and stand up and block the picture. You couldn't see anything but the actor's reactions after that. So I never saw the shark until it was re-released. I actually saw Jaws 2 and Jaws 2 Shark before. I actually saw the best shark of all from Jaws the first time. I was about seven when it came on TV. And I just I remember watching it with my daddy. We were sitting at this foot of the bed eating popcorn and this was pretty much <laughs> how I was the whole time. <laughs> it was awesome. But I remember loving it and feeling thrilled um, that I was able to watch something like that <laughs> with my dad. <laughs> couldn't figure it out as young as I was, always hooked on Harry Housen and other special effects. I couldn't figure out how in the world did they do that. Train you can't train a shark. I mean it was just an amazing, amazing. Just a, a thrilling experience. Just I think that was the first scary movie I ever saw and and that was just, now I love them. I try to watch all of them. Um, I was born in 1971. So, you know, doing the math, 1975, I was four years old. I don't really remember the first time I heard it, but it's one of those things where I probably knew the music before anything else. I knew that, dan -a, dan -a, dan -a, dan -a, that meant that there was a shark coming. And I, you know, I just remember hearing about it and it was just this big, grand movie. And you know, back in the 70s, you didn't have VCRs or, you know, it could have been on broadcast television. I don't know. I, I do remember the first time I saw it wasn't until I was 10 years old, 1981. Um, we were one of the few houses in our neighborhood that had cable television. So I do remember it was a big viewing. Um, it was on HBO. My parents had a lot of the neighborhood kids over and all the kids were I'd say anywhere from a year to four years older than I was. I was the youngest. Um, but geez, yeah, I, you know, 1981, 10 years old, saw the movie, and there are so many things that that movie changed about me. I was intrigued. I remember renting Jaws 2 every week from the video store. Uh, at which time the the video store owner told my parents that they he should they should probably just buy the film for me because it's going to be cheaper than renting it every week. So that's what they did. First time I watched it, man, I I, I was flipping out. I was flipping out because I, I I was just so fascinated with the size of the shark, especially that that scene where it comes right by the boat. 
And then he's like, oh, it's a 20 footer. And Quint's like, 25. It's just like, it's, it's insane. Like that, that shot right there, I think kind of made me freak out. Every, every, even now when I watch that, that scene, it's probably my favorite scene because I get to see like the, how big the shark is. Um, and uh, every time I watch it, I get excited. I get re-excited every time I watch it. There's, uh, there's one scene where um, I think it's, it's the first time when they're chasing him and you hear that, that music come on, that really, um, you hear that, that background music, you know, like, da 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 like it starts kind of, that's my part where I'm like, all right, yeah, this is so cool, like, we're chasing the shark, like, I'm so invested in it, and I'm having such a great time, and I don't really talk that much when I watch the movie, um, I just watch it, and everybody around me knows I get, like, sucked in, and they don't really talk to me, uh, because this is kind of like just a moment. Uh, the first film in the series that I saw was, in fact, the original, when it aired on ABC, on November 4th, 1979, it was the ABC world premiere. And uh, I had just turned four years old the previous month. And uh, I can remember all the hype that surrounded it that week. You know, a major motion picture coming out in those days, that was a pretty big deal. And people based their whole week around that. And, uh, yeah, I remember the late great Ernie Anderson, you know, the greatest adventure ever. Anytime I heard that promo or anything involved with that, I stopped what I was doing and immediately ran and watched the TV, you know, because that was, you know, it was a big deal back then. And the, uh, the night that it aired, I remember that very vividly. My mom had one of those old time popcorn poppers, the old air poppers, and she had this giant, I guess it was a Tupper, Tupperware bowl big giant yellow bowl i mean this thing was the size of the mothership and close encounters i mean it was huge and uh, of course we had the glass bottle cokes and you know everybody was on the couch and you know kind of gathered around i was on the carpet right in the very front of the uh the uh, tv and it just from the classic opening score to chrissy entering the surf and just you know it was it was a roller coaster ride of an experience i i'd never forget it i mean that's one of the most colorful childhood memories that i have and just the anticipation was so high i mean that final the final long trailer that they played right before the movie started you know the red jaws logo charging at the screen and john williams score in the background i mean it was it was an exciting time and it was a magical time kids that grew up in my opinion you know kids like us that grew up in the 70s early 80s during those days i mean those were magical times and it's it's a shame that i don't know kids nowadays just don't get to experience that because i mean now you want to watch a movie you pretty much you can look find it or get it anytime you want to watch it but back then you know it was something that built up over time you know you waited for it and it was it was it was exciting times, very magical times. I also remember, I don't know how many years it was after Jaws left the theater, but I was shopping with my mom in a department store. And while she was looking at clothes, I would be over somewhere else looking at toys or whatnot. And I believe they had a little setup of this new thing called video disc, kind of like a laser disc. And I don't know if it was the full movie of Jaws or just some kind of demo which showed certain scenes from it. But I just remember standing in the middle of a department store watching the head of Ben Gardner come out of the boat and freak me out all over again. And I'm thinking, man, they shouldn't be showing this in the middle of a department store. Uh, but at the same time, I was glued to it and it was the only chance to see that, see those scenes. Uh, this is. Um, I think before VHS, but I'm not sure. Um, but it, you know, the only chance you could get to see Jaws again. Uh, I believe they brought it back a few years later as a re-release, but um, yeah, the memory of just watching clips of that standing in the middle of a shopping mall, uh, department store, um, very vivid. I tried to watch Jaws many times before I actually made it all the way through. I would bargain with my parents and you know i'll clean my room i'll do this in order to stay up late to watch jaws and what would happen is i would get a blanket i would get my pillow get on the couch and the movie would start 
and as the movie progressed, I would get lower and lower until finally Ben Gardner's head popped out of the boat and I would flip and I would decide it was time for bed. And that was it. And I think I made it probably nine or 10 times before I finally went all the way through. Jaws was coming on TV and the trailer, or I guess the ad, the promo was on and it showed a clip from the end of the movie of the shark crashing through the half sunken orca and I couldn't believe how cool it looked, how great the shark looked. And I thought, I've got to stay up and watch it. I have to stay up and watch the whole thing. And I did. That was the first time I saw Jaws. Well, it was a beautiful combination of absolute fascination with complete terror. <laughs> I, uh, I remember several scenes where my head was firmly buried in my mom's armpit saying things like, uh, tell me when it's over, tell me when it's over. But uh, I loved it, I absolutely loved it. Couldn't wait to go see it again, which I did like two or three more times during that initial run. Um, after that, uh, all I did was draw Jaws pictures. I mean, it really had a profound impact on me. Um, I I just, uh, it's it's, woven into the fabric of my childhood, absolutely. I was blown away. It just, uh, I, I remember vividly, in, in my mind, I still remember sitting at the Charles Movie Theater in Boston and watching it and hearing the screams and the people. And I remember the long line. It was the first time I stood in line to see a movie. I never saw that before. Um, and, and, it, and after the movie, I, the, f the next day we went to the library and I took out books on sharks. I just wanted to know anything, finding anything about the making of Jaws. My dad soon brought me home the Jaws log and magazines and it was great and that's the start of my collection. When I got done, it was one of those things, it was like I wish that we could have just sat there and watched it again. Um, like I said, it was scary, it was funny, it was, it was, you know, it was like, you know, John Williams talked about his, his um, score being like a pirate movie. It was an adventure. The whole film was just an adventure. So it, yes, it was scary. Yes, it was um, funny. And but it was it was like a roller coaster ride. You know, just when you thought you'd reach the end, you know, you'd go up another hill and you're going to have to go down again. It was just it's an emotional roller coaster. I was raised on on South Louisiana on the bayous and the rivers and and stayed in the waters and swam and fished as a child coming up. But after Jaws. I was afraid to get in two inches of water, and and it, just the slightest little stick or something bump into my leg, or a shrimp nibble on me, or a small fish, I uh, would come screaming out of the water along with my brother and sister. So for a long time, and uh, even even my my mom, you know, wouldn't wouldn't we didn't want to take us to the beach, take us to the river and and uh, to the freshwaters outlets, but not the beach, but I didn't want to get in any water. Uh, even the bathtub was scary. I'm more of a collector now. I wasn't then. I remember one of the first things I did get when I was probably 11 was the LP, the John Williams soundtrack. And um, a friend of mine had it and uh, you know he didn't want it anymore. He knew I loved the movie, so he got it for me. And I think after I scratched the hell out of that, you know, my parents got me the cassette and, you know, I took that all around, you know, and took it to school. I was listening to it in school while other kids were listening to, you know, Duran Duran. And it was like, you know, just, I was probably the, uh, the Jaws geek of Cedar Hill School, that's for sure. I've been collecting Jaws memorabilia since I was nine years old. Um, they made it, you name it, I probably have it. Um, still looking for some things. Um, I love looking at other Jaws fans' collections also to see what they have. And some of the things I, they have, I didn't even know. I was like, oh my god, when, I never knew they made this. So I love looking at other fellow Jaws fans and collectors' um, collections. Um, you know, I, I have now have a website that I'm probably known for, uh, JawsCollector.com. And um, you can see my, my entire collection there. 
when the movie first came out, I was already into sharks. I was buying a ton, uh, a ton of shark stuff, just like books on sharks and and um, you know pictures and stuff like that. And I was kind of collecting all that stuff. Um, and then when Jaws came out, um, obviously um, when I was old enough to have an allowance, I um, my dad actually took me to the um, the movie store and I bought Jaws and um, I kept watching it like every day and um, started kind of really memorizing the lines and, and literally just like <laughs> sitting in front of the TV for hours just having it on loops. Um, if I was doing something like cleaning my room, Jaws was on in the background. Um, and I make sure like every 4th of July I, I watch the movie. Um, and I think it's pretty cool because I'm actually from Rhode Island. So, um, you know, the, the fact that Martha's Vineyard is so close to me um, is, is awesome because I can actually take a trip out there within the day. I could be there, I could be in Martha's Vineyard in two and a half hours if I wanted to be right now um, and, and just walk around and see where they film the movie. And that's, that's something that a lot of people can't say and it's pretty awesome. Um, I think um, I started buying uh, books. I bought the book Jaws. Uh, I also, um, you know, just started printing out pictures of, of screenshots from the movie. Um, and one of the coolest things that I think kind of um, even was a, was a bigger influence, or not an influence, was a bigger kind of impact on me, was my grandfather, when he found out that I was a huge Jaws fan, uh, he actually had been to Martha's Vineyard when they were filming the, the movie. And he had, uh, in his office, he had a, a frame where it was, uh, the shark from different angles actually on the platform um, that he had taken from a distance and there are these these um, glasses that I would kind of put on that were like binoculars um, but I would get really close to the frame and it would, it would magnify the picture and I could see the you know the, the front of the shark and, and see like the side of Bruce and the front of him and it was just, it was awesome and um, every time I went over his house that was like the first thing I did I went into his, his office I put on the glasses I looked at it had to get like my fill for like a second and you know then I could do whatever but I couldn't say hi to anybody it was like hey grandma I'm going to the office yeah I have to go to the office to look at the thing awesome like get my you know get my my moment and then I could have family time my uh, first collectible was about an eight or ten inch shark jaws replica and uh, I was afraid to put it in the bathtub. You know, I, if, if I put it in the bathtub, it wasn't with me in the bathtub, and so I just let it swim around. And um, it was it was a pretty cool toy. I don't know what happened to it to this day, but years later, I uh, was was able to collect my first copy of Jaws, and it was on a VHS tape that I picked up in a resale shop, um, something that I could afford <laughs> back then. And um, I latched on to it and uh, ran home and plugged it in and, uh, and relived that experience. But nothing will ever be like that night in that theater when Jaws hit the screen. It was, uh, it was crazy. It changed my life. The movie's always been in my heart. I've always never let it go, but I was kind of out of the memorabilia uh, industry looking for things. I had some things as a kid, not many. Then, of course, with the advent of the internet, you know, I found Amazon and eBay and just started going crazy buying photos and all the programs that came out back then, the movie programs that I probably still didn't have, a few posters, magazines. I really like getting the magazines. And then other things here and there, small other things here and there. The, the biggest thing, the biggest thing was like from six years ago with an online auction that was actually an auction in California. Everybody probably knows about it, Profiles in History. Um, just saw everything on there, got the impression of, of Jaws, threw me back to my childhood. And I decided that I was going to go in there and try and get some of the stuff, which was they had the fin from the estuary that they used. And they had the chair, the fighting chair that Clinton was in with the pole at the end of the scene fighting the shock everybody probably knows about it and I came out of it actually getting all three and thank God I had enough money put aside for all of them and I love sharing them with all my friends and um, I remember my granddad giving me then he had the Jaws the original novel before the Jaws became a film and I remember he said you can have that and I, I was too young to read it but I looked at the picture on the front I remember putting it next to my video and thinking wow I've got a collection of Jaws things yeah and um, that's how this started 
So then over the years then I stopped building up a collection until I managed to put it all in a big big cabinet like this. And lots of memorabilia here, lots of autographs. I managed to meet Susan Vaclini, play Christy Watkins, um, Ted Grossman, lots of autographs, lots of rare memorabilia books, movie stuff from when I saw it in the cinema um, a few years back. Uh, pictures of me with various props, stuff about the, the ride. Um, in Universal Studios, so lots of lots of memorabilia. I've been collecting Jaws items for a while now, and I have T-shirts and laser discs and VHS tapes. Uh, I have poster prints from different artists. I have models of the of Bruce the shark. Um, I have the original um, re-release poster when they released the movies a few year, released the movie again a few years later. I have um, some art prints by an artist named Paul McPhee who does some amazing Jaws stuff. I have an original watercolor uh, of his and um, the, the best piece that I have in my collection is a piece of the Orca 2 which is the boat at the end of the movie that sank. It was a full size replica of that boat and they could sink it and raise it and sink it and raise it um, to do the scenes over and over. And I actually have a piece of that right here. Uh, it's about six by 12. It's amazing. Uh, there's the red paint near the top of the boat. There's where the rail would be. And there's the black. And there is a spot there where I guess um, one of the ropes or cables was attached. So it's, it's an awesome, awesome piece of my collection. The piece de resistance, if you will. When I was a kid, there weren't a whole lot of shark things anywhere so you know there were rubber sharks that looked kind of hokey but I would get every rubber shark I possibly could and play in the bath I had this one really great one I loved it because it looked if, if I, I can still picture it perfectly and it probably looked less realistic than the other ones but it looked more like Bruce from the movie it looked angry and mean and it was hollow, it was hard plastic, and there was a, a motor attached to the bottom with a propeller that was watertight and fit a AA, AA battery in it. And it would, you could tilt the motor a bit and it would go around in circles in the bathtub and it would just swim with the fin sticking out. That was my favorite toy I think I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Do you still have it? No, I don't, it fell oh, apart. No. Oh. Um, Eventually, the Betamax tape got overplayed, all right, and then we got the VHS copy, which again, the same thing happened in time, the video, all right. But then, in around year 2000, the DVD player and Jules Anniversary Edition in widescreen with bonus features. And this includes the Steven Spielberg documentary and making of on the disc, which is absolutely fantastic and a classic. So yeah, there's my DVD of that. Also in my Jules collection, got the t-shirt. Can you say once you've got the t-shirt? I've got my signed Jules poster behind me in my home cinema, where I have actually watched Jules many, many times on my big screen. Um, also, I have got I have the boat. And here is the fishing boat from Jaws, which was a present of mine many years ago. Um, here we got Brucey here, Brucey the shark coming up on the back of the ship. Um, and inside we've got Quint himself. There's no Brody or Cooper, which is a shame, but um, Quint is my favorite character from Jaws. I got into, you know, the like shark attack novels, shark books, I mean, just basically any anything involving the ocean, you know, life, there was this, I remember this one book I had, it was called Life in the Oceans, I believe, and I had another one called uh, Sharks Attacks on Man, it was a little paperback, and uh, my sister, bless her heart, she was living in Florida at the time, and uh, she uh, got me, or tracked down the uh, 
Jaws paperbacks and everything, Jaws and Jaws 2 for me, because I'd wore out that original one I'd referred to, you know, the front one that I first got a hold of when I was real little. I mean, I read it so much it basically fell apart. <laughs> so she kindly got me the novels, and uh, I started really getting into those. And uh, as I said, you know, it basically, Jaws basically just opened my whole imagination. I own the soundtrack on a cassette tape. Uh, I did a little uh, tape play of it with a buddy of mine when we were like 10, 10 or 11 years old. We did a our own little radio version of it, uh, which was quite funny. Uh, I remember this one bit where my friend says, listen to the waves and he pours water into a cup <laughs> it was, i was like that doesn't really sound like waves dude but good try <laughs> um yeah i remember i still remember the first time it was on hbo i actually uh went over to a friend's house to watch it and i actually recorded it on the tape and used to listen to it when i go to sleep at night i was i was completely obsessed uh, I had a neighbor next door who had one of the very first commercial uh, VHS players I had ever seen, and he also happened to have a copy of Jaws on tape, which was hard to get. I mean, it, w it was like a bootleg. It, you couldn't get it at that time. And I used to bug him all the time, can I borrow your VCR and your Jaws tape? Come on, man. Finally, he was like, here, take the tape. <laughs> he got sick of me bothering him. but. You know, that's how crazy I was about it. Um, as far as real collectibles, here's the thing that kind of <laughs> I'm kind of bummed about is that we have all these great collectibles now. And there was a few when I was a kid, but not as many as I, I would have hoped. You know, I owned the Jaws log and I had the Jaws 2 log and uh, Memories from Martha's Vineyard book by Edith Blake and all that. but. Uh, you know, I, I ne and I got the Jaws toy, you know, the, the game and all that, but I didn't, there wasn't as much cool stuff as there is now, you know, like I, I remember the first time I saw that McFarlane maquette set of the Orca and, and I was completely blown away by that. I was like, wow, why didn't they have that 20 years ago, you know? But uh, yeah, as far as collectibles, especially now, I you know I, I buy the movie whenever there's a cool new edition. I have the poster. I have uh, you know the Jaws log and the uh, the really nice big coffee table you know, making of Jaws book by Jim Beller, uh, and uh, I, I like those. But I haven't really bought a lot of the other collectibles. The movie's good enough for me, I suppose. You know, I've gone through several videotapes and iterations of, you know, the original videotape, then the letterbox, and the 20th anniversary, then, you know, the 30th anniversary DVD, and now, okay, we got the Blu-ray, and now who knows what's going to come out next year for the 40th anniversary. So, you know, it, I never really got into collecting the Jaws stuff. I, I do, over the years, I've collected other things. I do have like the original paperback to the uh, the Jaws log. You know, I've got a. I mean, it, it's not a real autograph thing, but I do have. You know, in, in my, my lab, I have. I do have. It's a copy, but it's the you know Shaw, Dreyfus, and Scheider, and it's you know picture of black and white with their signatures. But it, it's not a real. You know, I got it on eBay for five bucks. I'm like, fine. It looks. You know, it's not real. I know it's not real. I'm not going to pass it off as real. I just think it's cool. At one time, I was really into buying the, the film from different countries. So I remember Japanese VHS tapes, uh, Jaws 3, uh, posters from Turkey, you name it. I was into the foreign stuff. I just never had been able to afford it. Plus, some of these guys will spend days, hours, weeks online looking for looking for the old Jaws game or looking for um, the, the Jaws puzzles. I mean, I've seen pictures of Jaws memorabilia I didn't even know existed. Um, you know, people like my friends Jim Beller and Lou Pisano, they, they've got Jaws stuff and then some. You know, Lou has made these Jaws figures. You know, if you remember the Planet of the Apes figures, Miko, um, used to make these these uh, action figures, you know, they made Starsky and Hutch and SWAT and all these. They never made Jaws ones. Lou has 
put together, he has a set of Jaws action figures, Miko action figures, that he makes. He has the heads molded, he has all this, that, that to me is an absolute true Jaws fan to somebody that would go to those links to make action figures that he, um, that he actually sells online. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's a, very cool, a very cool thing to watch these other guys and see all the other stuff. I just, I just can't afford it. I have this big Jaws poster that my daughter found when we went to Hastings one day looking for a movie. And she found in the, um, in the bins for like, it was like $20. She found a reprint of the original Jaws movie and she about lost her mind. She come running down the aisle and she had it in front of her. She couldn't even see. She was just running with this poster in front of her. Dad, 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 look what I found, look what I found. And luckily I had the money, so I bought it. So for a $20 poster, it cost me $160 to frame because it was an odd size poster. But you know, I, I spent it because that's, I'm more of a poster guy um, than really a, 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 a memorabilia thing. And the only other thing that I've really purchased that I've held on to was the um, Scott McFarlane uh, Jaws boat, you know, with the attack of uh, Quint with the boat sinking. So, you know, I bought that, but you know, I just, I just really don't have a lot of Jaws stuff myself. I let everybody else collect it and then, you know, live vicariously through Lou and Jim. So, <laughs> and so I got to experience Jaws mania in the seventies. I mean, the marketing for the film, the commercials, the posters, the t-shirts, the toys, the collectibles. I'm, I had all that stuff. I still got a lot of that stuff and always picking up more stuff. There was not really anything to buy back then. I didn't really care about beach towels. Posters were cool. There were some good books out, the Jaws Log, but there was no good shark stuff. So I started really just make, fishing for sharks and, and learning how to sculpt and make sharks myself since nobody was putting any sharks out. You couldn't get a good shark. Oh, so I'm just all about the shark. I mean, I, I've heard some rumors there are some actors in the movie and a couple of boats. But, you know, really the shark is there. The yeah, I'm all about the monster. And uh, thankfully nowadays, there, there's getting to be some really good collectibles out for the film. My first collectible was uh, the set of bubblegum cards. Oh. And I, I, I remember I had all of them from Jaws 2, except for one. And you turn it over and you made a puzzle out of the back. All right. And I was missing that one piece. I never could get it. And then um, the collection ended up being lost one way or another. But he, from one of my birthday presents or something one year Mike found the whole collection and bought it for me and guess what one was missing <laughs> and then the whole entire thing I went to do the puzzle piece and one. one was missing oh, and um, the guy we wrote him and he sent it to us so that was good it had a happy ending to that story Jaws changed my life probably more than anything else ever has. Um, sharks became somewhat of an obsession, certainly an interest. When I was a kid, there wasn't anything else except uh, Jaws. And as we got older, certainly Shark Week and everything else because of Jaws became a big deal. And wanting to be a writer, I usually wrote about sharks and then writing my first book, Jaws Fest Murders, having to do with uh, Jaws Fest that we all came to know and love as Jaws fanatics. So now all of my books are about Martha's Vineyard and sharks and something. I would say follow your heart and the money will follow. Well, Jaws changed my life, I suppose. Uh mainly with my fascination with filmmaking and uh, you know the magic that you can create you know that was something that just you know nobody had ever seen before and looking back on it it was you know an incredible uh, you know cultural event and to have been able to be you know taken part in something like that must have been just really incredible uh, well it 
kind of put me down in the money as far as the props go, but it also gave me a great investment for the future and appreciation for the props in the movie. It's a very big thing now, like sports memorabilia. And other than that, though, deep down in my heart, you know, just having the movie, having thoughts about it, being able to see it any time I want to see it, and sharing those memories now with uh, friends that I grew up that I grew up with that I didn't know back then. It's definitely a film that that has affected me from watching it as a child. Perhaps I was a little bit too young to watch it, but it is something that has continued on into my adult life. Because um, I actually live in Cornwall at the moment, which is on the coast, and um, we're quite close to the beach. So very often I'll be on beach walks or coastal walks, and I will look out to the sea, and sometimes my imagination will think that I'm actually seeing doors, you know, the fins cutting through the water and then seeing surfers and bathers and thinking, oh my God, you know, I'm hearing shark, shark in the back of my head. So yeah, it's definitely had a, an effect and impact on me in my, in my adult life. But, um, I think the film prior to seeing Jaws as a child um, was E.T., um, another Spielberg film, which then led me into Jaws, being a fan of Spielberg's work. Out of all the shark films that have been made, Jules, I think, has been the only one that has left an impact. I think because it was an original idea and the whole psychological concept of it, because it, to some people, and especially when you see the cover with the big shark, you know, it looks like it's going to be a monster movie, but it, it's, it's more than that. It's more, you know, the psychological and the, the deepness that, the fear that brings with it. I would say that it definitely has that um, inspiring, like filmmaking inspiring feel to it and um, I know I've definitely used the famous zoom in zoom out shot a lot in uh, just either playing around or just in little little films I've done and um, so I mean I guess you could say it changed life for that and uh, it's definitely a movie I like watching um, whenever I can. I'm from New England. So that movie was really hit home for me. You know, I've been to those beaches, I've been to those islands, you know, and for a while I didn't know that it was shot on Martha's Vineyard, but there was that familiarity that, you know, I've been here before. So everything that I was seeing in that movie was things that I had been seeing my whole life up until that point. So it was different from, you know, like Star Wars and Superman and everything, the other movies that I had watched at the time. This was more, you know, it had that familiar feeling toward it. So naturally I just kind of gravitated toward it. And, I mean, as it turned out, it just became one of my favorite movies of all time. It inspired me to make film. It really inspired me. It had a huge inspiration for, for me. And, and I wanted to create that magic and that fear that I felt that night in that theater. Because um, there was nothing like it. The first film for me is the best film. And, and um, I've really never felt anything like I did that night watching a film. It, it was, um, it could have been my youth, but to this day, when I plug in Jaws, it still has the same, same powerful feeling, fear. The unknown, what's under the water, what you can't see, it, it, it's all there, that magic, that illusion. And, and um, it inspired me to, to want to recreate that and become a filmmaker. And, and so today, as a as a independent filmmaker, it's it's one of my goals to recreate that same kind of magic. It's uh, always refer to Jaws and uh, the magic that Spielberg and his team did, and um, you know it, it's a it's a classic tale uh, to me of of, uh, of taking not having what you need and, and a film falling apart and, and a filmmaker pulling money out of his pocket and, and, and making a cult classic film just outstanding. So it's very inspirational, uh, not just the fear and the horror of the film, but it, it's an inspirational story how Jaws was created. So yeah, it's, it's affected my life. It changed my life in many ways, and I don't go swimming still. Um, I, it, 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 like Pete Spadetti said in his interview, made me a little poor um, from buying all the stuff over the years and finding stuff in my collection. And um, it, it's just, 
an incredible movie. It just, it, without it, I can't imagine my life without it. Even though Jaws was my number one favorite movie of all time, I make it a point not to watch it that often. Uh, unlike most Jaws fanatics who watch it every other month or twice a year, um, I make it a point with movies like Jaws, Close Encounters, Superman, things that I loved as a child, um, to just view them every three, four, five years. It just keeps it more fresh and special and the kind of the experience and the memory of what it was like to see it for the very first time. It keeps it kind of fresh and new for me. So um, so I don't I don't watch it over and over and over. I don't have all the lines memorized, but uh, but it's still my favorite movie of all time. It's always tough to put a number on it. Well over a hundred. Seems to be streaky. A lot of times when it's on a lot, keep watching it. Don't watch it for a while. Many. How many times have I seen the film? Honestly, I couldn't tell you. So I've never really counted, but I could probably recite them line by line just like everybody else. Could. Well, all I gotta say is this. Any real Jaws fan will never have a clue of how many times he's seen Jaws. I couldn't even tell you how many times I'd seen Jaws by the time I was 13 let alone now. Um, it's a funny thing though, I, I just, you know, I bought the Blu-ray right when it came out and I'll watch it maybe once a year or like that and you know, and it's on cable a lot and I try not to watch it all the time because I don't want it to get, you know, stale or whatever. Uh, I mean, I always enjoy watching it. Well, you've seen it how many times? Hundreds. I've seen it at least. 50. <laughs> and now you can have, have it playing in the background on the computer in the workshop while you're doing things. So. Usually have Jaws Day once a year. I think everybody has yeah. one of those where we just pull Jaws it out and watch it again. Absolutely. I have no idea how many times I've seen Jaws. You know, it starts, you would wait for it to come on TV in the beginning and then VHS came along. I remember recording it off of TV onto a blank video. And then, you know, actually buying it when it was released on VHS in all of its forms, you know, first the anniversary and then the whatever. And then DVD and then Blu-ray. And now, you know, it's on our computers. Well, it's on my computer. It's on my computer. It's on my iPhone. I don't think a week goes by that I don't watch at least a, a bit of Jaws. I'm, I do this, I have this weird kind of thing where I'm seasonal with my movies, like John Carpenter's The Thing, I, I will only watch in the winter. I would never watch that in, in July. And on Golden Pond, I would never watch in December. It would just never happen. Jaws is somewhat of an exception. I'll watch it all year. But in the winter, I do watch it less frequently and in bits and pieces, whereas in the summer, it's a distinct possibility I sometimes will watch it more than once a day <laughs> in its entirety. <laughs> How many times have I seen Jaws? <sighs> to be honest, I couldn't even tell you, I've actually lost count. It's been that many that I just don't have enough digits to count up. How many times have I seen the film? Jeez, uh, countless times. Too many to count, I'd probably have to say definitely in the hundreds, especially the original film. Um, really enjoyed Jaws 2, Jaws 3, I've watched those particular films several, several times. Um, you know, especially in the early years, you know, after we finally got a VCR, you know, renting it from the video store. Um, you know, obviously my VHS recording that I made off of ABC in uh, June of 86. So just hundreds of times, countless times. And as Jaws fans as well know, you know, hundreds of times, you know, isn't nearly enough. You know, I'll be, I'm sure I'll be watching them hundreds of times more. <laughs> oh, I don't even know anymore. I've seen it so many times when I was a kid. I mainly watch it more when I'm around my dad. And when, um, when I'm just, you know, by myself, I'll watch it like maybe once a month. Uh, I really don't watch it all that much, much, but I talk about it a lot, so. How many times have we seen Jaws together? Not sure. Alright, we're not sure.
naturally a movie I've been watching since I was a kid that you know there's no way to keep count uh, but I would guess in the hundreds you know I mean there was a time in my life when all I was watching was Jaws whenever I could so yeah I mean it's it's up there the beginnings of cable TV there was a thing called on TV and it was just a box it had a little on and off switch on it and um, all they did was run movies um, for like 15 hours a day. They'd start at like 7 o'clock in the morning and then end at like 1 o'clock in the morning. And a friend of mine, uh, Derek Hassler, he, um, they had on TV. We couldn't afford it. And so he said, hey, uh, we're going to watch Jaws next week. Do you want to come over Friday and spend the night and watch Jaws? <laughs> Duh, yeah, hell yeah. So I, um, I got my tape recorder. Now I used to, I used to, on my audio tapes, I used to record on cassette tapes, movies, and then I just listened to them over and over. I used to do that with, with uh, television shows. I did it with like Christmas shows, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, stuff like that. And so I took my tape deck over to his house and set the little microphone up against the TV speaker and recorded Jaws and listen to that thing over and over and over. And actually I had those tapes up until about five years ago. And um, they had just kind of disintegrated. So I had to throw, I, I just, I couldn't hold on to them any longer. I threw them out, but, um, and just listen to that over and over and over and over again. And to this day, I can, um, I can recite not only, not only the key lines and stuff like that, but even the little noises in the background or, or people's voices, you know, here, Tommy, here. So Jaws fans will know that one. Um, but that, that kind of stuff. So that was, that was kind of the beginning for me. And then I just, I've never not gone even a couple of weeks without watching it. My wife and I recently did some math to figure out how many times I've actually seen Jaws. Now what we did was we added up the first, from the first time that I saw it in the movie theater, went through the number of times I saw it on television, how many times, just average, because I couldn't ever really actually count how many times I listened to the film on the, on the cassette tapes that I had. Um, and then obviously when the video came out, the DVDs came out, all that stuff, I mean, we did some rough math, and as of about a month and a half ago, now it's, it's January of 2014, as of December 2013, we figured out just as a rough average that I had seen and listened to this film over 5,000 times. And that is, is, you know, because there were times I'd listen to the cassette tapes three or four times a day, you know. Um, right now I'm kind of on a Jaws roll where I watch it every night before I go to bed. It's been in the DVD player in my bedroom for the last three nights. And I've sat through most of it almost every single night. So, um, you know, it's just, it's just one of those movies that I just, you know, I've seen more than any other film, you know. And it's uh, it probably freaks some people out. People are looking, going, "Oh, okay, I watch it once a year. You're just off the hook." The Jaws fans. Well, I mean, what can I say? They're the nicest people in the world. You know, they all share a common bond. They all have a deep appreciation for this movie and you know we all share lines from the movie and we share you know stories about you know when we've seen the movie like we're doing right now and it's just you know from Jaws we've actually grown not only as friends but as a family you know we've almost put Jaws aside and gone on to different things and you know we, we get together and we watch these rip-off movies and you know it's it's just from one thing, uh, wonderful friendship to have uh, blossomed from that. Oh, well, a lot of them become very good friends to me, like yourself, and going to the festivals that Martha's Vineyard had, just mixing in with all the friends and the people, sharing that same, you know, attitude toward the movie, you have a lot in common. I actually didn't know all that many other than my dad until I went to Jaws Fest, and 
I'll tell you what, um, there are some really, really big Jaws fans, and I was uh, surprised how into it they got. Um, it was it was really cool, and I thought it was uh, fun to see, and uh, I couldn't really become like be a part of those conversations because when they mean Jaws fan, they mean it like every last detail. Oh, did you notice they were wearing one shirt, but we're wearing in the next scene? You know, and I I didn't notice that. I'm just like. Wow, <laughs> so that, that was, that was, I couldn't really be a part of those conversations at uh, Jaws Fest, because I don't know that much <laughs> about it. <laughs> the biggest Jaws fan um, that, I, that I knew up until the point where I was maybe 23 was my buddy Don. Uh, my buddy Don is, is a big Jaws fan like me, like we've, we've watched the movie uh, a bunch of times, countless times. And um, as soon as the Blu-ray uh, Jaws came out, we like went, I went to his house and we watched it on Blu-ray and on his like high def TV and it was awesome. Um, it's such a good job with that, such a good job. Um, and actually two years ago, um, I went to the second Jaws Fest on Martha's Vineyard. Um, and um, I actually, uh, I'd seen somebody that I had recognized and I didn't know how I knew the guy. And um, it was kind of bothering me. And then um, I was kind of working in Providence at a specific store and uh, he came in and I actually happened to be the guy that was helping him out. And uh, I had seen him on the news um, in Rhode Island. And I said, hey, are you the guy that has like that massive Jaws collection? And he kind of like was taken back and he was like, yeah. And that was uh, Jim Bellet or uh, Jimmy Jaws. And uh, I got to meet him, man. And he's been like such a cool guy. Um, one of the coolest guys. Like we were big, best, like we're really good friends right now. I mean, me and my buddy Don and, and him, we just recently went out to dinner a week and a half ago and just talked Jaws where we, um, we, we talk about, we have seen his collection, which is insane. Uh, it's the biggest collection I've ever seen. Uh, it makes mine look like a joke. But um, he has like everything that you could possibly think of. And uh, it's just to go over there and see how much of a fanatic he is, uh, is, is amazing. I told him about the picture my grandfather took and he was flipping out and he was like, I gotta take a picture of this. And he scanned it and he's like, if I ever put this in a book, you'll get credit. And it was just like, it was just so cool. And he, uh, he's just been a really cool guy to hang out with. He loves talking movies and uh, and he's probably the biggest Jaws fan I, I, I think I know and will ever know. I love meeting Jaws fans. That's the one thing when I was, um, I, I believe John also said this, I thought I was the only Jaws fan out there because uh, I met so many Star Wars fans over the years, but I never met a fellow Jaws fan. So once the internet started, JawsMovie.com started, the Jaws board, I'd meet all these great fans now on Facebook all over the play. I, I, you know, it's amazing. I love meeting Jaws fans from all over the world. You know, as far as Jaws fans that I've met, and I, you know, I haven't met a whole lot that are quite as nutty as me until I, uh, you know, got involved in the, like the Jaws fan pages on Facebook and that. And then I actually did go to an art exhibit not too long ago, uh, the Smiling Son of a Bitch exhibit, which was fascinating and amazing. And I was like, wow, I'm not, you know, I, I really thought I was unique in that. You know, I knew there were a few fringe fans out there, but I had no idea, you know, I mean, no idea how, how many people really love this movie. I am kind of like reconnecting with that. Like, wow, there's all these, you know, people. And, and actually, strangely enough, one of the people that's kind of bringing me back into that fold is the widow of the... <laughs> the man that Quint's based out of, um, Frank Mundus, the the supposed uh, you know basis for for Quint was a Long Island fisherman. I got the chance to know him shortly before he died. Uh, I got you know maybe I caught one of the last sharks that he ever caught. I don't know, um, but the, the the whole for a good summer. He was behind an aquarium, and they had his boat, which, you know, the cricket, too, which was, you know, what the orca was based on, and that people didn't know who he was. So I would have my own personal, you know, sit down with him every week. You know, sitting down with the real Quint was just this amazing thing. Um, 
but then, you know, I helped his wife after he, he passed. Since she knew I was one of the last charters, I helped her, you know, get some photographs of the boat when she sold it at auction. And we, we stayed in touch. And she is really a big draw. I mean, you know, she was married to Quint, essentially. Martha's Vineyard was so amazing. Going to Jaws Fest was the funnest vacation I think I've had ever. Like, I remember it really well, and I had a great time. The fans were all super nice, and they all got along super well, and people would be so excited about a movie. Like, that's, that's really exciting, like, to see how much love and how much dedication they've put into it. The people, like, the fans that were at Jaws Fest were amazing. I met some amazing people. Uh, well, the film changed my life because it introduced me to some of what are now the best friends that I have. So it, it introduced me to a lot of great people. That's that's an easy one. We we are such a diverse crew, and it's it's people from all walks of life that otherwise you wouldn't normally meet. It's a creative group, so we have writers and directors and artists. All walks of every kind of art that you can imagine are all brought together by this love of sharks and this love of Jaws. It's it's a wonderful thing. People who otherwise, you know, if it wasn't for Jaws, would walk by each other on the street. It's a pretty cool thing. From all walks of life, we have uh, people from England. We have friends from Spain, all over the States and Canada. It's pretty cool. Is it almost like Star Trek fans? How we see how fanatical they can get, like Trekkies, Jawsies. More rubber fins, less rubber ears. You know, as far as being like the only one that ever liked Jaws, it's kind of funny because before Facebook, before social media, before the internet, you didn't know who else liked the movie. The only time you knew about the people who liked the movie were the people that were in the theater or that were maybe at the video store. You know, I did. I worked at a video store for about a year and a half, and several people, they would come up and they'd have Jaws, or Jaws, you know, when uh, Jaws 2 um, came out. Um, even Jaws 3, having those on video, you know, people would bring those up. They'd have all three of them. And those, that's, those were the only times that you knew about Jaws fans, and literally, you would get to interact with these Jaws fans for a matter of 30 or 40 seconds because working at a video store, you gotta keep the line moving. And um, so that was the only interaction with other Jaws fans I ever had until the internet. And once the internet came out and um, people started building fan sites and then you know, obviously just in the last you know, three years, because of Facebook and you know even MySpace before that, it's been cool to be able to interact with other Jaws fans. So as a as a kid, you know I always wanted to go to Martha's Vineyard, especially when I found out it was a real place. You know that it wasn't a Hollywood set. And um, you know over the years it was kind of one of those things. You know God, I really really like to go to Martha's Vineyard. I'd really like to go to Martha's Vineyard. Well, getting to know a lot of the Jaws fans on Facebook, um, my buddy Lou Pisano um, has done these Jaws Fest films and um, he's been doing those since I believe 2005 and so he kind of goes there and, and his Jaws Fest films have been more of a, um, for those people who can't go to Martha's Vineyard, he's, it's like a tour kind of thing. And, um, and he talks to Jaws fans and puts together little skits, and they're just, they're, they're great for Jaws fans. The Jaws Fest movies that, that him and his wife, Yana, do are just amazing. They're fun to watch. Um, and getting to know Lou and Yana, um, and they got to know my work. You know, they've seen, they've seen a lot of the short films that I've done over the past few years, and they really enjoyed my work. Well, I got an opportunity when they decided or they were forced to do Jaws Fest 4 that um, I was going to be, you know, I, I was, uh, I had decided that we were going to go to Martha's Vineyard. And so when they did Jaws Fest, the tribute, which is the last Jaws Fest Martha's Vineyard put on, 
um, we decided we were gonna we were gonna go, and so we packed up everybody. I mean, Angie, uh, Taylor, Brianne, Jillian, and myself. The five of us went to Martha's Vineyard and spent a week running around Martha's Vineyard, seeing all of the things. I was videotaping a lot of the time. Um, we just had a blast, and then we met all of these people that we've been talking to for the better part of a year. We met them. Um, the majority of them, I and mean, they were all from all over the world, you know? Jaws fans, holy shit! Jaws fans you can touch, you know? Jaws fans you can high five. Jaws fans that you can sit there, and and I handed, we were, <laughs> we were there, we weren't, even, we weren't even on the island for an hour and a half. Um, we stopped at the campsite that we stayed at, dropped everything off, and then, and then ran downtown to get the opening ceremonies of the Jaws Fest um, uh, week, and met my buddy John Carroll, call him CC. Met him down there, um, talking for a little bit. Hey, bud, give him a hug. Blah blah blah. And then um, got the opening ceremonies, got everything, um, and then through the opening ceremonies, met our buddy Brandon Carney, Cardi, um, young guy very cool, very cool guy, uh, another young Jaws fan. I mean, the guy's not even out of high school yet, and he's a huge, huge Jaws fan, which is cool, which means we're passing it on. We want the future generations to know all about Jaws. But then all of a sudden, within an hour and a half, we're interviewing Carl Gottlieb. We're interviewing the, the, the screenplay writer for the original Jaws film, and, and you know, coincidentally then, wrote the screenplays for, for Jaws 2 and 3, too. Um, we're interviewing him. You know, we're standing there, and John, has, he, I handed him the microphone, so he's got the microphone, and he's pointing it at him. I'm standing there with my video camera, shooting video, and John and I are looking at each other. Every so often, we're looking at each going, it's Carl Gottlieb. You know, and then John would look up at me, it's Carl fucking Gottlieb. You know, and, and then... You know, we're just in, in awe. And there was no judging. There was no, you could do anything. You could say anything. Where, you know, in regards to Jaws, and everybody got it. And they joined in. You know, we sang, me and me and Lou and uh, Cece and, um, and uh, Justin White, we all sang, show me the way to go home. And we didn't just do it. We didn't just sing it, we sang it like they did in the movie. You know, I'm tired and I want to go to bed. I had a little drink and drumming on it. And it was just fun. It was just fucking cool, you know, with all of these Jaws fans. So, um, so yeah, I mean, the fans are, are amazing. Um, and getting to make that trip was just phenomenal. When we got to Martha's Vineyard and I got to meet some of the true diehard fans that have made movies and have collected everything that they could get their hands on, Jaws memorabilia wise, you know, it was it was neat to see that because I, I, I knew that, okay, my husband isn't completely crazy. Um, but it was nice because, I mean, the whole town and, you know, on Martha's Vineyard or Amity, the Amity Island, as most of them like to refer to, um, it's it's definitely it, it. They've just become kind of crazed. It's it's pretty crazy. I, <laughs> I mean, I think it's probably you know the same thing when you go to you know a Star Trek convention or something like that. But it, the Jaws fans, they're just they're fun people. I mean. They, they all could tell you, I mean, I met people that knew more about where things in the movie exactly were laid out and, you know, we went on a boat tour and we were able to see, okay, right here is where, you know, Chrissy, you know, got, you know, towed across the water and, you know, and that was just, it was pretty, pretty amazing that there was that much knowledge in some of those fans. It was pretty awesome. The uh, Jaws fans that I've met over the years, especially here the past uh, handful of years online, I mean, just, you know, great people. I mean, they're, you know, basically, you know, just like me. You know, they have a fondness for not only, you know, the Jaws series, but, I mean, just films in general. You know, we answer each other's questions with movie quotes and things like that. And it's it's really cool when you can put a quote or answer somebody somebody's post with a quote and they get it automatically or they continue from that quote on in the movie and stuff like that. I mean, 
It's to, it was comforting to know that there was a batch of insane, crazy people just like myself. <laughs> this particular part of my life, has, it's been a tough stretch. I mean, my father, he had a major stroke. He's been bedridden for several years now. I've been his primary caregiver. You know, got an autistic little girl who I love dearly and take care of. And just getting to know them and all the wonderful people on the JAWS sites, it's it's been it's been a good escape for me you know it's it's really really helped me get through some some rather tough times you guys have really helped me got me through some tough stretches you've you know given me a lot of laughs and a lot of smiles and you know it's it's been wonderful and like i said god bless every one of you i, I love you all to quote the great ozzy osbourne <laughs>
especially Jaws 4 appealed to me because they go back to Martha's Vineyard, which I always thought was very cool. But Jaws 3, I thought it was something different. I liked that Joe Alves was directing. I think that it was neat that they tried to do a different take on the story and not go back to Amity and do something different. So, um, and the nostalgia factor. Like I said, I, I grew up watching it on TBS, so I just have fond memories of seeing it. I would say that the first Jaws has to be my favorite film. Um, there, there is something about the creature and the story and and it, it just it just very organic the, the the shark was was you know practical a, a piece of me mechanical equipment and it just looked so real everything that it, it about it looked real and uh, it's something about that organic practical effects in that film that really uh, and the story they acting, it was, it's all incredible. It's, it, to me, it's over the top. And it's my favorite, it'll always be my favorite. Jaws, the original is my favorite. Um, favorite scenes, dialogue. Uh, like I said, oh, the camera shot, when the shark comes by the boat, um, obviously when the shark comes out of the water, when he's tossing the chum, um, I, uh, I really like that other shot too, where um, the, he's, Dude in the canoe gets tipped, and then you see him kind of the shark like sideways, like coming up over the side of the boat, pulling him under. Um, that's just disturbing. My favorite um, Jaws knockoff movie would have to be Grizzly because I really wanted to see it when I was a kid. My mom wouldn't let me because she thought it would be a horrible, it was a, you know, a Jaws ripoff. She goes, you don't need to see that. We'll go see Jaws again. I'm like, all right. Um, but so that made me want to see it more. I had the book and when I was a kid, even though my mom didn't take me to go see Grizzly, she bought me a little rubber figure like this. So I actually had this, but I never saw the movie until I was like a teenager um, when VHS came out. I finally got to see it. And then, you know, today's shark films are just no comparison. I, I mean, I watch Ghost Shark and Sharknado and all, all of these shark films that they're trying to recreate, to, but they, the magic is just not there. It's, uh, it's all digital. It's so digitized that it's, uh, it's, it's almost uh, embarrassing, but, um, it works for some, but uh, it's just not the same for me. I, I'm just not crazy about any of them. It, it just, the, a lot of it is a story. The, the, the scripts and the stories are just, you know, cheesy to say the least. But, and then, then when you pile on the effects and, and you know, the digital effects and, and that are, you know, just, just poor, um, so no, I, I'm not a big fan of today's shark films. I mean, Jaws, I'm not a fan of sharks, for one. I, I'm a fan of Jaws because what the movie did for me, the, the, uh, the magic, the, the fear, it, it has nothing to do with my being a fan of a big shark. So making a shark film is no different than making a um, alligator film to me. If you could create that same magic, then you've got a winner. And, and, and you've got a fan for me. Uh, some of my favorite Jaws ripoffs or knockoffs are uh, Up From the Depth, which came out in 1978, filmed in the Philippines. Of course, Piranha, Devil Fish, uh, Grizzly, some of the land animals. I love Orca, I love the soundtrack. Um, oh, the list goes on. Alligator from 1980 with Robert Forster. Um, uh, you name it, they're just about Tentacles, which some people don't care for, like Jimmy Jaws, but I love tentacles. Um, yeah, the list goes on and on. I don't like the new shark films that are being made now, with the exception of a few and really Two-Headed Shark Attack, because they built a physical shark. A two-headed shark, in fact. Um, I, I don't like all the CGI. I think that they rely too heavily on it. I remember back before Deep Blue Sea came out, I was really excited about it. I saw photos they were releasing for the film before it came out, and I was really excited. And then when I saw how much CGI was used, it, it really took the wind out of the, the, the sails for me because it, it just, it, I get lost in the CGI. I like to know that there's a clunky rubber, whatever, mechanical something that they're towing around or that's swimming around. So Two-Headed Shark Attack is the exception, but by and large, I'm not a, a big fan of the new shark films. 
I probably have to say the one that I liked the best was actually another 70s movie. It was called Grizzly. That one scared me almost as bad as Jaws did, but in a different way because I, I lived in Salt Lake City, not too far from the woods, and saw this movie about this giant killer bear. Yeah, that one uh, that one freaked me out a little bit, and that, I, I love it. It's it's You look back on it now, and it's pretty campy, but in the 70s, it was pretty hardcore scary. Um, as far as the movie, the shark movies that are out now, um, I don't know, some of them are okay. Uh, Deep Blue Sea was good in parts. Uh, didn't really care for the CGI sharks, but when they had full size, you know, real sharks or realistic sharks, I thought those were pretty cool. Um, Sharknado. Okay, I get it. <laughs> that was uh, pretty ridiculous fun, I suppose. Um, but yeah, a joke, totally. Let's see, uh, let's see how much buzz we can create with Facebook with a totally ridiculous movie. Um, the Piranha movies were okay, you know. Yeah, you know, I, I'm always good for a good carnivorous animal movie, you know, if it's done right. <laughs> I have to tribute that all to my good friend John Campo Piano, amongst everybody else. I never really got into a lot of those. I was able to separate those from the original movie. So I kind of um, enjoy them for what they're worth and I keep them separated from Jaws. And a lot of the favorites have been the ones that John mentioned earlier and Piranha's a big one. Probably some others that I'm gonna see that I haven't seen yet. Orca was like that, but I kind of saw that in my own different light because it had to do with the killer whale. And a lot of what was in that was so true because they're like just like us. But that was the nice ripoff, let's say. I honestly don't think I've seen any knockoffs. I mean, I don't know if it would be considered a knockoff, but I've seen something similar. Uh, what is it, like Lake Placid? Um, that one, it's not a knockoff, but it's still got that like, oh, something's under the water, I can't see it. Uh, it's got that kind of feel to it. Um, other than that, probably, I've seen a couple shark films like newer ones and it's just all CGI and it just kind of sucks and it's over gory to the point where you can't even really focus on the storyline it's just like oh look at that limb fly that way oh look her head's over there you know it, and it's just boring I don't really like it all that much I can't believe they made a movie called Sharknado I have not even watched it because it just looks so horrible um, I, to be honest with you though, a lot of people hate Deep Blue Sea and I actually like that movie. Um, I think some of the CGI in it is pretty cool. I mean, the concept's kind of lame, but at the same time, I thought it was, um, I thought it was a good movie. Um, anytime somebody gets eaten by a shark, it's just disturbing. So it's, I don't know if it's the fact of, I don't know if I like watching that, those parts, but I, it, it's like, I think it's the anticipation before that. Piranha and Alligator. Both of them, I think, are John Sayles films. They're, uh, they've got a good sense of humor, good characters. I really like Piranha Happens in the Water. I'm a big fan of, I guess, because of Jaws, of creature films. So anything where animals are, are eating people, but um, Piranha and Alligator. Later on, the shark films, more recent, relied too much on CGI. They try to shark show so they try to show the shark uh, all the time, which takes away from the effect of the shark, and you see, you get to see how silly the CGI looks. The movie The Reef was fantastic. They didn't use CGI, and you barely saw the shark, and it was a pretty tense movie. Oh, my favorite knockoff has got to be Ghost Shark. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe it's because we've made the mechanical shark for size like Ghost Shark. <laughs> I don't know. It's only like the 11th mechanical shark we've ever built, but are you kidding? There's been so many great knockoffs, you know, and they've used so many different ways. And uh, I don't care if they use hand puppets or if they use full-scale mechanical sharks. That practical effects is just the way to go when it comes to a shark, or it's just a candy commercial. Some of them are taking Jaws out of the water and, and turning it into a grizzly. You know, it's the same thing, you know, only instead of Brody, the sheriff, you've got um, the uh, park rangers, 
going after him. And you've got the bear expert hunting him down. And, and so you got Grizzly. I actually really like and still like to this day is Piranha, the original Piranha, not that gore fest crap that they put out here a few a couple years ago but the original piranha is a great jaws knockoff film it's it's actually very scary it's it's got its gore factor and it's it's really a good film i enjoy it um still nothing will ever be as good as jaws i have to say um some of them are kind of cool i think the sharks in deep blue sea were awesome the animatronic uh sharks that they used I think we're pretty cool. Um, I think bait was kind of cool. Um, shark Night was, the sharks in it were really cool, like the CG sharks in it, and some of the, again, animatronic sharks they used were cool. Um, it's just like kind of too much uh, kids drinking and partying and TNA and, you know, like the obvious storyline plot. I, I don't know, it just kind of. Not, I don't know, not my cup of tea on, on the most part, but um, I would hope that if, oh man, if they ever try to go anywhere with with these movies from this point on, I just, I hope that they don't cheese it up like some of those films and make it, you know, a bunch of TNA and just girls, you know, getting eaten on the beaches of Amity. Like, it would just be ugh, awful, <laughs> awful. I remember being at work and picking up one of uh, the newspapers we had there and I saw an advertisement for uh, Jaws Fest on Martha's Vineyard. Uh, and I gotta say for a while, you know, even though Jaws was one of my favorite movies, it, it was just that. It was one of my favorite movies, like Back to the Future, like Aliens. I mean, it was just one of those movies that I never really, you know, thought much further of. But then when I saw that they were doing a Jaws Fest, you know, basically right in my backyard, I said, my God, I gotta go to this. This is, this is unbelievable. Nothing like that had ever happened. So as a result of that, you know, just going to this Jaws Fest and meeting all these people and seeing the island for the first time, you know, it's, it was amazing. And uh, yeah, everything that's kind of unfolded because of that, all the friends I've made and, you know, all the stuff I've started collecting ever since. I mean, it's really, really been a, an amazing influence on me now. Well, more so now, uh, again, you saw it then, you enjoyed it, you know, it was your childhood, you grew up with it, that's really like the basis of it, but now, many years later, uh, it's almost like you're, you're rekindling those memories and you have more of an appreciation for it now, and it's that nostalgia of remembering when you were back young, back at that time, being young, watching it, remembering thing, things better than just vividly, real specific moments, and it's like a revitalization of your life, really, it feels like. It's always been in my life. It's built my life. It's built my memories with my family uh, when I was growing up, and I've made new memories with my with my own family now. My children like the movie. My husband likes the movie. They don't love the movie as much as I do, but since I watch it so much, they're now quote lines from the movie. They do little trivia and they try to get me on questions, and it's become more of a family movie. Part of it, again, being the right place, right time, was because I got bit by a shark, it kind of kept me in limbo as far as jobs for a while. So, you know, I was still wearing a brace, didn't know what to do. So at the time, I was working at movie theaters and movie theaters in the Hamptons. And Roy Scheider was a, a frequent, uh, he would go to the movie theater a lot. So every year he used to pitch in an annual charity softball game. So that summer, I actually, you know, went to see the game and when the game was over, you know, a lot of people were there. A lot of them were had their uh, was it Sequest was the show he was on back then in the, the 90s. So a lot of people had pictures of that. So I'd actually taken off my brace, and it's like, look, you know, can you you sign this brace? And he looked at me kind of odd, and I kind of like really clicked. Oh, I was you know attacked by a shark, and he kind of looked at me like, wow, really? And he looked like he wanted to talk more. But, you know, again, there's lots of people there trying to get his autograph. So, you know, I was like, okay, I'm happy with this. Got him to sign my brace. Kind of cool. And three days later, he came into the movie theater. And his wife had dropped him off. He came in, got the tickets. And I guess she went to go park. So he's just standing there in the lobby by himself. So I was like, I, I can't pass this up. 
So, you know, I started talking like, hi, you know, Mr. Scheider, you know, there's a guy came up to you and I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so from there, he, you know, it was kind of a running joke in my family, like, oh, my buddy Roy, but he would. I mean, it was one of the few people that, you know, I would actually let into the movies for free. Um, didn't have to. A lot of celebrities kind of like expected it. Like, oh, do you know who I am? I should be able to get what I want. But, you know, I kind of told Roy, I'm like, look, you know, that I'm working in a movie theater, but... I went to school to become a meme object because of Jaws. So whatever you want, I'm going to give to you because, you know, it, it's it's you were part of this movie that changed my life. So this is my way of repaying you. So it was kind of a funny thing was that, you know, he would come in and he'd come see the movie and he would usually always come back in at the end of the movie and thank me. But the one movie he actually said, he came in to see Jerry Maguire and I had no interest in seeing it because I wasn't really a big Tom Cruise fan. But he actually came in after the movie was over. I said, Scott, I got to tell you, you got to see that movie. It's a really good movie, and I think it's got a message in there. And sure enough, I watched the movie, and I'm like, what am I doing here working at a movie theater? I just, you know, I went to school for marine biology. I need, I need to be Tom Cruise. I need to change my life. This is not what I want to do. So, you know, I ended up quitting the movie theater you know gave my notice and like this is it i'm doing something else now it didn't happen to turn out right away it still took a few more years before i got into marine biology but you know i always looked back at that one the one time he did come to the office and that specifically told me like you got to go see this movie so jerry mcguire's always had like a special meaning to me now too a lot of it had to do with roy scheider and that little piece of advice you know, it's a funny thing, uh, you know, being so young when I saw it, you know, I really saw the archetypes, the, the hero, Brody, the expert, Hooper, and then the warrior, Quint. Um, and it's funny, uh, you know, each of those characters have, have played a, a kind of a, a role in my psyche, I guess you could say. Uh, Brody was kind of a father figure. He reminded me a little bit of my father. And so I, you know, that that was kind of important. Uh, at one time, I wanted to be an ichthyologist. And so Hooper was an interesting character in that. You know, I wanted to study sharks and, and see sharks and, and, and like that. And then it's funny because Quint really adds the danger as much as the shark, you know, the, the craziness, you know, the, the, the Ahab-esque, you know, uh, obsession with catching this fish, even at the peril of their lives, you know, the, the risk to their lives. Because for so long I thought I was the only one on the planet that was into the film and collected memorabilia, and by meeting other people that were doing the same things, um, it gave me a better sense of community and introduced me to a lot of great people. You know, Jaws affected me in, a, in the way that I wanted to be a filmmaker. I mean, I already wanted to make movies. I've wanted to make movies since I was about eight years old. But Jaws kind of solidified that, as it did for several other, other directors. I feel that Jaws affected me the way it did because of of the magic, of the fear. The, the, the story is incredible, the acting. It is um, very few movies that do that, and there, there are some, but I think it is, it is that, is that illusion. Uh, for one, uh, anytime you're on the water, and uh, you, you, the, the music, the unknown of what's underneath you and the acting that's done above the water and the, and the trickery, the, the illusion of, uh, of something being there that you can't see. And couple that with a great story and, and, and actors and uh, organic mechanical effects that are just over the top. Uh, I think that's why. I think that's why I done it for me. Um, still does. Well, because sharks are cool and especially great white sharks. And I think that cool people recognize just how cool sharks are. Uh, my oldest son was born right on uh, right in the little shark factory 20 years ago. I mean, that's why they have shark week every year. They don't have squirrel week, they don't have cat week, they don't have whale week every year, they have shark week. Not yet. It's because <laughs> sharks rule. 
and the king of the sharks is Jaws. Sharks are fascinating. Sharks are amazing. And when, when I was a kid in the 70s, they weren't everywhere like they are now. They weren't in the public consciousness, which is, I think, a great reason why the movie worked as well as it did. Because people didn't really know exactly what a shark looked like. So the shark in Jaws seemed that much more real. We didn't have a frame of reference. We didn't have Shark Week every August on the Discovery Channel. We didn't have shark documentaries at IMAX. We didn't have, you know, uh, the aquarium and we could walk under tunnels and see sharks swimming over our heads. None of that existed, absolutely none. We had Jaws and that was it. So uh, we, I think we had uh, Blue Meridian which was a documentary, a really good documentary about searching for the Great White. But where would you see a documentary in the 70s? You never did. So I think that's why. It was the only place I got to see a shark. I don't know if it just, it may be because of the time period that I happened to grow up in. I mean, I've always said that, you know, people like, you know, most of us that grew up in the 70s, 80s era of cinema, I mean, we're, you know, some of the, one of the luckiest generations I think out there. I mean, it just, everything was just fresh and exciting and, you know, all these just cool characters and stories and, I mean, you know, just, just what a time to grow up in. I mean, had I grown up, you know, in a, you know, a few years later in a different decade, you know, could have very easily been another movie that, you know, that really grabbed my imagination. But I'm so fortunate that I grew up in the era that I did and that, you know, Jaws was the film that, that got me. Because I had an interest in sharks and this just kind of heightened it even more. And I think for me as a, little kid seeing it for the first time, it kind of freaked me out. Um, yeah, it really freaked me out. Um, but as I kind of be got older and got to see um, the other Jaws movies and I got to see um, how big of, uh, how big of, how, how many friends of mine were fans of the movies. It was kind of cool to be able to sit down with them and see their reaction and see how they reacted to the film. And even if I watch it with somebody who hasn't seen it for the first time, it's good to actually see their reaction and what they're going to be afraid of. Um, like I showed, I was pretty surprised. My girlfriend had never seen Jaws before. And it was, I think a year ago, I showed her the film. And when I found out she hadn't seen it, it was almost like, this is the next thing we're doing. We're watching the movie. You have to see this. I can't believe you haven't seen it. And I, I knew the two scenes that she was gonna freak out was um, Ben Gardner's boat where his head pops out and like his eyes missing. And then the other part where uh, Jaws comes out of the water for the first time when he's tossing that stuff in the water. Um, so I think those were kind of, um, just the fact that those are big things for me, like watching it with friends, seeing their reaction, and um, seeing how they're affected by it and then showing it to people that haven't seen it before is just like really fun for me. The iconic music from the 70s till now, anytime, even people that have, that have really never even seen this film associate that da -na, da -na, da -na, that sound um, signifies danger in anything, even if you're not, um, pretending to be a shark when you're in the water or anything, but if you're sneaking up on somebody or, or uh, like my children, they've never seen Jaws, but they'll make that sound when they're in the swimming pool because they know that has to do with, with, uh, with a shark. It was more realistic than like, you know, a, a crazy flying alligator came from space and blah, 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 blah. You know, it wasn't like that. It was more so that fear that everyone has about going into the water and knowing, not knowing what's below you. And, you know, I mean, it's not exactly like, you know, this one shark is gonna get fixed on you and it's gonna follow you everywhere. It's, obviously that's not what happens, but it's just not knowing and that it could happen. You know, a shark could attack you once or twice, you know? And that's, yeah, it's just scary to me. I don't like that.
Of course, I love the three main characters that goes without saying. And of the three, Brody is my favorite. You know, rooting for the underdog. He's uh, out of his element, not happy to be on the water already. Throwing the shark into the mix makes it worse for him. So you, you identify with, with that character. He's a great character. It's a good performance. You know how you know that when you're in the water, Chief, you tell by looking from the dorsal to the tail. What we didn't know was our bomb mission had been so secret. No distress signal had been sent. Ah, they didn't even list a silver Jew for a week. Very first light, Chief. The sharks come cruising. So we formed ourselves into tight groups. You know, it's kind of like old squares in a battle like a, you see on a calendar. Quint's death, I mean, that was just an incredible piece of cinematic terror that you just hasn't been re replicated, I don't think, you know. Uh, you'd never seen anything like that, a man being eaten alive by a shark. Uh, it, it terrified me the first time I saw it. And, it's, you know, I, I don't know, maybe in a morbid sort of way, it's probably the scene I've watched the most. But uh, that's just, that was the melodrama ratcheted to the highest you could go. And I honestly think that if they hadn't had a scene like that or if they'd done what had been originally done in the book where he got pulled underwater and drowned instead, I don't think it would have been as great a movie. It would have been a great movie, but I don't think it would have been as great. You needed to see that happen. One part that sticks with me all the time is not even like a big line or anything. I just, it, I laugh every time I hear it and it's in the beginning when Nikki is like, All know me. You know, I earn a living. The head, the tail, the whole. <laughs> yeah, you get the head, the tail, the whole damn thing. Uh, the Indianapolis speech, just, you know, what a moment. And, uh, you know, as far as uh, some other dialogue I like, actually it's this spot of dialogue is from uh, Jaws 2, you know, when, you know, Brody's basically, he's he's showing, you know, the whole town council, whatever, the, the picture of the shark, and they don't believe him, and finally he just, he has enough, he's like, you know, but I'm telling you and I'm telling everybody at this table that that's a shark, and I know what a shark looks like because I've seen one up close, and you better do something about this one because I don't intend to go through that hell again, you know, and he just lays it out there. You know, because, you know, he, he knows he knows what's out there. And, you know, who could blame him for wanting to go through that hell again, basically, you know? I really love um, when uh, uh, Alex Kittner actually gets uh, attacked. There's that amazing shot where it, like, zooms in on Chief Brody's face. It's just, like, that's such an iconic shot. And, and most favorite is, is when, when Snyder looks out and sees the shark and the camera's on his face and he, he backs out and, and, and uh, says, we're going to need a bigger boat. That, I, I felt everything that, he, that that actor was giving and, and he did it so well and uh, I, I didn't even have to see what he was looking at. Although we saw a shark, the shark go by, uh, or, or we saw his mouth, but I didn't have to see that. I, I knew what he felt, and, and uh, it was it was foreboding, and uh, you know, gloom and doom just set in. It, it was that good. You're going to ignore this particular problem until it swims up and bites you in the ass. I don't know. It's got a deep throat crack. What kind of shark? I don't know. Tiger shark. A what? Favorite moment, I really love the scene with the chief and his younger son, Sean, at the table when he's very downtrodden and things don't look very good and promising. You know, it gives me, it gives a throwback to my childhood relationship with my father and family. And, you know, he tells him to get on his way and go find something to after he gives him a hug and a kiss. And that's what it's all about. It's all about what everything else is about that's good love. As far as, like, Oh, the, the dialogue is really good, and I always—I I never really thought about it, but again, this is going back to how much 
all my college friends were into it, was my roommate freshman year. His favorite scene was actually on the ferry when Vaughn and Meadows go out. And I never really noticed it. He's like, but it's such a good rhythm where Brody's talking and then Meadows cuts in and then Vaughn. He's like, it's so well choreographed. And I never really... and. So because of my roommate, like that's that's a special scene now because I I, I I realized that's when I started to look more at like dialogue too. Like before that, okay, it's just a, a visual film. Like that was kind of yeah, you know the lines and everything. But that was like the first time I think I started paying attention to that and maybe into some other movies too. When he comes at you, doesn't seem to be living until he bites you, and those black eyes roll over white, and then ah. You hear that terrible high-pitched screaming, and the oceans turn red, and spite of all the pounding and the hollering, they all come in and rip you to pieces. I hope to pass on this stuff because I'm hoping to open up a museum someday on Martha's Vineyard with my entire Jaws collection and all the information, all the books, the magazines, the articles, just to pass it on to future generations because it is a classic movie and it will continue to be a classic for many years to come. Well, I guess I could be considered a part of the next generation and I don't know. I mean, it's still, it's, Jaws has not faded and I honestly don't think it ever will. Um, because no matter what, there's always some kind of Jaws reference from something, you know, you see it in movies, a poster in the background, or, you know, uh, a little collectible, or, you know, someone say, you know, we're gonna need a bigger this, you know? Uh, there's always some kind of reference, and I just honestly think it's gonna be one of those movies that's never gonna die. Um, now that I'm a Jaws fan, I mean, I think it's pretty cool, um, that my kids watch it, um, that they laugh with us, and, and, you know, get a kick out of watching Todd and Brienne quote every single line of, of the entire movie. Um, you know, making my way up to, to Martha's Vineyard, you know, as a family and, and scheduling our entire, you know, vacation that we haven't had in 10 years around going to Martha's Vineyard for Jaws Fest. That was pretty neat and bringing my kids up with us was really cool too because that, you know, they got to experience the whole Jaws fan and Jaws this and Jaws that um, and see Jaws on the big screen in the middle of a park you know that was pretty exciting um, and I, I hope that it doesn't ever die I think it's it's kind of one of those classics that that should outlast many many future films my children and I have been watching Jaws basically since they were infants I know don't judge but they have always been fascinated by the by the shark and they have never seen any of the gory stuff. I've always made sure that they've been sheltered from that. So you, you mentioned Jaws and they, they perk right up. They know what I'm talking about. And I have a wall of Jaws autographs and you know they see that all the time. And you know I know that Jaws is going to affect them the same way it affected me just because it's special to them now and it's something that they'll remember. Jillian and Taylor actually, Taylor had never seen Jaws before we went to Martha's Vineyard and Taylor will now sit through Jaws. If we're watching Jaws, oh, ooh, Jaws is on? And she'll sit down and watch it. Jillian has seen Jaws um, quite a few times. She watches it. I know she watches it on a regular basis. Brianne watches Jaws with me when she's home if she's not at her mother's house. She almost inevitably will watch Jaws and loves it absolutely loves it and she's she's going to be 13 and the first time that she saw it she was four and just shark movie dad shark movie we got to watch the shark movie she did never called it jaws until she got to be about eight or nine we all should as film if if you're a filmmaker out there as filmmakers we should try to get to that level and that that level of filmmaking and storytelling um you know i'm, I'm going to pursue that and 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 I've studied Jaws and other horror films, and it's uh, it's not hype. Jaws, Jaws was not hype. It's not a uh, you know thing that is just going to come and go. And uh, it's 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 a film that appeals to all ages and and uh, not just teenagers. It, it appeals to everyone. It, it's because of the powerful 
story, the, 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 the powerful illusion of, of the film and the way it's made. And I wanted to do the same thing with, with my films. I want to, to, to bring that kind of magic to an audience and make them feel the same way because that's really what filmmaking should be. It's, it should entertain you and, and, and uh, move you and, and, and swing your emotions. That's, that's, that's filmmaking, that's art. That's really what I'd like to do. We need to get past this fad of using CGI for creature effects and uh, go back to practical effects where all the talent and the realism is. Actors and directors love to work with something that's actually there, not uh, ping pong balls glued to an actor or something on a stick. Uh, practical effects, and that's what we've supplied practical effects for uh, three films now. We show how superior it is, especially when it comes to sharks. Plus, we're leaving behind the highest quality replicas that you could ever want. These things will be in antique stores uh, in 40, 50 years. So they use as good as they do right now, because we make them as good as you can. I think we're doing all we can. Uh, the face of sharks has changed over the years. Now they're protected. Uh, and uh, next generation, I think, if we, I hope if Jaws is never made, but it is, you know, I don't. I hope they don't do what has been done to King Kong. I hope they go physical, practical effects. In fact, I'd like to make that shark. So I think we're doing all we can to make sure the right decisions and the right people are in place for the next shark movies to be made correctly, using real things, real practical things, um, and they can collect real practical things. Uh, computer hulks are fun, but uh, Lou Ferrigno's cannot be replaced. So that's what we're doing. It's pretty much what we've all been doing, just like within my family, with my nieces. They know I'm so fanatical about it, so to speak, and they bring it up more than I do. So when they first were born or got to know those things, I must have really been a pain in the butt. And just um, probably sharing like the, the appreciation for what it is, what it's really done, you know, the professionalism, the people behind it, all the fans, the following, all of that, the essence of all of that is something positive, something good. So you're sharing the love, everything that goes with it, with those people, and it's, that's very important. So you want that to influence them. So just sharing what the uh, essence of the movie has done for all of us. Well, I hope that they see what we saw in it uh, as a film in its own right, apart from its historical time in film. Uh, I think it's well up there with like films like Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Star Wars. Uh, it is a blockbuster. Uh, I, I just hope it doesn't ever lose its its fashion. You know. My plan to help the next generation continue to love Jaws is to help Jimmy Jaws open a Jaws museum. So something, an idea that my buddy Scott comes up with is buying it for everybody's birthday. So I think that's what we should do. Everybody out there, anytime anybody turns like 12, 13 years old, friends of yours, your kids, buy them Jaws for a birthday present. That's, that's, that's a good way, that's good, Scott. I like that idea, just buy them Jaws. I'm gonna start doing that. Because Jaws is still readily available to, to, to get at any store and I'm, yeah. Fuck it. I'll buy. <laughs> I'll spend. I'll spend 15 bucks if, if it's if it's gonna make people uh, the next generation. It's gonna make them watch the movie. Then I'll you know I'll do whatever I gotta do.